Hello and welcome to this presentation on the development of a drive unit for a cost-effective follow focus control system. My name is Janu Meiberg and I'm a lecturer at the Central University of Technology in the Free State. Uh, we are a university of technology based in the city of Bloemfontein in South Africa. The content of this presentation will include an introduction, the problem statement, literature review, the methodology of the study, the results, and the conclusion based on those results. Let's start at the beginning with the introduction. In a learning environment, hands-on experience with equipment, uh, especially equipment of a highly technical nature, is critical in education. Financial restrictions within developing countries place a severe uh, strain on how much equipment universities can purchase and whether they have access to the aforementioned technology. Furthermore, graduates that do eventually strike out after their studies have a very hard time affording very expensive equipment. Uh, the very high cost of niche equipment, whether you are in electrical engineering, whether you are in the uh, medical sciences, whether you are in the arts with photography, with camera equipment, the very high cost of niche equipment places further stress on this, especially if you have to buy by high volume of these equipment for large numbers of students. Now, the development of cost-effective open source solutions have steadily kind of assisted with this, especially if it can be assembled with off-the-shelf parts to still perform at industry standard levels. So the possible solu solution to this or the difference this can make is having access to cost-effective open source industry relevant technology will greatly assist higher education institutions in allowing their students to be ready for when they eventually reach industry or when they strike out as entrepreneurs. Now on to our problem statement. Determining the most financially viable stepper motor that meets the required performance levels to serve as an off-the-shelf part in developing a follow focus control system drive unit that could assist in the development of the most cost-effective follow focus control system for deployment in higher education and as a viable option for graduates starting to assemble an equipment base for entrepreneurial ventures in the photographic industry. Let's start with the literature and the background. The evolution of cinematography from the early 1900s uh, and the creative storytelling it attempts to do created a need for new tools and new techniques as the art developed. Moving actors and the need to move the camera to more effectively tell stories created a need for tools that could accurately control the focus of the camera. And thus the follow focus system was born. Follow focus control systems evolved quickly to solve unique problems. The very first follow focus control systems were merely a workaround for controlling focus while the camera was mounted inside a soundproof housing. Uh, the development of ever more sophisticated uh, cinema cameras forced the very quick development of modular follow focus control systems that were adaptable, customizable, and were universal. Furthermore, uh, the development of special effects in cinema, specifically during the 1970s, also facilitated the need for automation or computer numeric control of such a follow focus control system. And then the popularity of more cost effective video cameras during the 1990s, specifically digital single lens reflex cameras that were capable of video, um, gave access to recording video, recording cinema, recording film to a much greater population. And thus the need for a more cost effective system was born. System on a chip systems have allowed the open source community to create many, many unique products that solve problems like this. And thus, it's no surprise that SOC-based systems, like a follow focus control system, um, were developed. But unfortunately, this requires a high degree of technical knowledge to replicate, and it's very difficult to do if you are not from an electrical engineering background. And lastly, very limited academic research in the implementation of a follow focus or a system on a chip based follow focus system has occurred with regards to cinematography and the art of making video. Uh, most of the research 
in this area has either been uh, a proof of concept just to show that it could be done or it's been used as scientific documentation and not necessarily for the implementation of aesthetics. The following are examples of how a follow focus control system has been used in popular movies in the last couple of decades. Our first example is probably a very well known one. It's the first Lord of the Rings movie, The Fellowship of the Ring, which was released in 2001. Get off the road! And the second example would be the 1990s movie, Jurassic Park. Now, let's look at the methodology of this study and how we approached it. Utilizing a prototype design methodology, we assessed the functionality of current industry standard products and defined a theoretical ideal performance that we had to match. Then we selected two candidate stepper motors based on their specifications and our defined criteria, and we designed and 3D printed motor mounts that would fit the current industry standard cinema rail systems so that they would be universal for implementation. Then we deployed our motor mount and devised tests based on our theoretical ideal performance. We ran these comparative tests and documented the performance of our, our follow focus control drive unit with video recordings of our tests. Then we analyzed the video footage uh, and assessed it using our defined matrix uh, to define whether we passed or failed industry standard performance. Looking at our two stepper motor candidates, the first one would be the very familiar 28BYJ-48 motor, which has a, a current draw of 200 milliamps, a torque rating of 2.9 newton centimeters, is currently sold in South Africa for 35 Rand 95 cents, that's South African Rand, and the final drive shaft has a rotation of 0 0.08 degrees for every step. Here's a visual representation of the 3D printed motor mount in our testing. The next step of motor is the 17HS2408, that's a NEMA 17 based motor. It has a, a minimum current draw of 600 milliamp, 12 newton centimeters of torque, is sold in South Africa for 129 Rand and 30 cents, and final dry shaft rotation of 1.8 degrees for every step. Our performance criteria we looked at. Uh, the ideal performance we tried to meet would be firstly, uh, smooth focus shifting, the ability to shift focus from one plane to another very slowly without introducing vibrational camera motion, uh, which would obviously render the focus shift noticeable and distracting. That's criteria one. Second criteria is fast focus shifting. We need to move focus from one focus plane to another at very high speed, but again, without introducing any motion or camera shake. And then lastly, accuracy and repeatability. We need to be able to do focus shifts multiple times, retain accurate focus, and so that we could repeat the same set over and over so that this footage could be used for uh, composite footage in post-production, so adding special effects. Based on this performance criteria, we devised the following test. We would place focus charts at intervals of 500 millimeters, 1000 millimeters, and 1500 millimeters from the camera. We would program these positions for focus into our Arduino-based control system, and we would cycle from point 0.1 to point 0.2 to point 0.3 back to point 0.1 in intervals. The first test, we would take 10 seconds to complete every focus shift, and this test would be repeated a minimum of 10 times. Our second test, we would cycle through the same points, with the same focus positions, but taking one second for every focus shift. And again, this test was repeated a minimum of at least 10 times. Here you can see some examples from the actual captured video footage from our testing. Uh, 
Uh, this one specifically being focused at position one or 500 millimeters from the camera and a documentary image showing the lens focused at that position. And the second image being focused at point three, which is 1000 millimeters from the camera and illustrating that focus position. So let's look at the results from this testing. First, we'll look at the results from the 28BYJ-48 motor. And looking at this table, you can see uh, we decided because we had to do a minimum cyclical test of 10, we decided to go for worst case scenario and repeat the test double that. So our first test uh, repeated 20 times with an interval or shift interval of 10 seconds. We speed achieved our speed and no noticeable motion was introduced, thus we passed. Repeated the same test at five second intervals. We successfully completed that with industry standard level performance. Two seconds, 20 cycles, again, same industry level performance we met. Uh, we met our one second target of repeating it 20 times without introducing noticeable uh, camera motion, and we still achieved accurate focus. But once we started dipping below our one second mark, uh, we started noticing that the shift was a little too violent for our current camera setup, and we started to introduce noticeable motion. And lastly, we went for a full torture test and tried to half that again, but sadly our motor failed to achieve the speed as the step rate was too high and we started to um, have skipped step and motor stutter. Moving on to the 17 HS2408 NEMA 17 motor. Again, exactly the same testing criteria, uh, repeated the cycle 20 times, our 10 second interval test. Uh, we reached uh, accurate focus and without any noticeable camera movement. Uh, thus, we reached industry level performance there. The same test repeated with five second intervals, uh, reached uh, those speed with accuracy and without noticeable camera movement. Uh, the same test at two second intervals, we did reach uh, that speed and without noticeable camera shake, we create or fulfilled our, our focus shifts. Uh, one second, we reached those speeds and were without noticeable camera shift as well. Uh, once again, we hit that minimum of one second intervals. Uh, once we started going below that, we noticed that our motor mount or our, our, our focus shift was violent enough to, to introduce camera movement. And lastly, a sub uh, one second shift of 400 milliseconds uh, was not achieved as our step rate was too high for, for what we were trying to achieve. Now let's look at the conclusions we can draw from this information. This paper aimed to test two reasonably priced off-the-shelf stepper motor driver configurations for suitability as the main component in the follow focus control system drive unit that compares with its currently industry standard counterparts. The proven performance, low current draw and low price of the 28BYJ-48 stepper motor rendered it uniquely suited for inclusion in a follow focus control system drive unit. A low cost follow focus control system will allow greater access for students to industry standard equipment and assist in learning critically relevant skills to allow greater industry preparedness and more engaging learning environments. The following are the references for this presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at the following email address. I'd be very glad to hear from you. I thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure presenting.